Chapter 10 Good Night You are listening at NovelFull.audio Jake waited stoically for the ten minutes to pass. A point of impatience was slowly building up inside him, but he still kept his cool. When the time was up, he hurried to check his bank account with his smartphone. Great. From $3,200 or something at first, he had now more than $40,000. Uncle Kalen was quite reliable. That was one of the good aspects of the 22nd century. Money in cash had very limited use, as above a few hundred dollars you had to justify the origin when making a cash deposit. This law nipped any chance in the bud to fiddle your taxes or use easily laundered money. On these days, most transactions were now done by credit cards. The advantage was that it was fast and simple. As long as your checking account was healthy and you as a customer trustworthy enough, you could basically make a transfer of any amount in your possession instantly. By following the shadow guide, he should now call his cousin Anya, but he knew that she was not as wealthy as his uncle. She would only lend him a few thousand, and compared to his fortune now it was insignificant. Henceforth, it was time to execute the plan. It was the most anticlimactic thing he had ever done. He was so eager with the idea of multiplying the former sum of money that he had imagined himself like an awesome trader. The reality was boring. Investing in stock markets could be done from his smartphone and that is what he did. Imitating his shadow guide, he blindly clicked on a random obscure start.up end. That was it. The path was still activated. The coach didn't give any length when it came to walking through a path until the very end. He only knew he would earn in a short time close to $400,000. Naturally, it was a one-dot-time occasion. Owing to the appearance of Oracle devices, the stock market would crash soon. Well, it wouldn't really crash, but it would become really uneventful. No speculations, risked investments or shady deals to manipulate the market. There was nothing to speculate about. Whatever an immoral businessman would try to influence the exchange rates or the stocks was deemed to fail. With the oracle, except for a few retards, no one would fall to any dubious schemes. Same story for casinos. Slot machines should have been one the easiest and funniest way to earn a large sum of cash in a night, but most casino owners were ruthless businessmen themselves. A breaking new already announced that almost 90% of these establishments had closed down. They were already looking for a way to rewire their slot machines to trick the prediction ability. Well, they could keep dreaming. If this alien technology was so easily countered, humans would have invented it themselves. Nonetheless, there was still the possibility such a path existed, allowing these millionaires to adapt their random dot-based money games to the new trend. Their motto would always be to keep milking a cash cow until there's nothing left. Dot in the end, exhausted with everything that happened this day, Jake overcooked his steak. A bitter tear dropped while he was chewing a chunk of meat tough as old boots. Comparatively, Crunch was enjoying his new life. The cat joyfully engulfed his kibble, crunching noises breaking the silence non-stop. He brushed his teeth, then directly went to bed. It was still early, but he needed this sleep to digest all these new things. The day after would be his first day of work with the Oracle bracelet. It was quite hard at first to relax, as he had a very clear impression of being watched. She's eyes were always on him. When he finally started to lose his consciousness, happily counting sheep, a thought came up that brought him right back from his dreamland. She, you're sleeping. He probed like an idiot already knowing the answer. He didn't have any good opener to break the ice anyway. Dot. There was no answer, but somehow he felt an almost tangible contempt arising from his oracle device. I am an AI. I don't need sleep. Of course, you don't. Can you get bored? How do you keep yourselves busy? He asked curiously. Authority level insufficient. Whatever. I mused about something. No one can see my oracle system nor my paths, right? That is true. For everyone else, you will look the same but with a new black shiny bracelet to your right wrist. 
If you decide it, you can even dissimulate it under your skin, thus appearing perfectly normal. Is it why the Oracle Overseer denied the possibility of this mouse not having an Oracle device? He suddenly remembered that the bracelet could indeed have been invisible under the mouse fur, even though the latter skin was quite translucent so it was unlikely. Dot. A low-intelligence mammal would never be able to consciously hide their Oracle device. Only animals with a highly dot-evolved brain would have a remote chance to accomplish such a feat giant octopus and sperm whales can definitely do it. Some apes, dolphins, whales, elephants too. Maybe a few parrots or crows, but certainly not a mouse. In comparison, a rat has a better chance to succeed. She was basically admitting that there was something wrong with this rodent. Anyway. He didn't intend to have a nightmare tonight. So, where were we? Ah yes, seeing the paths. Is there a way to know when someone's actions are guided by the shadow guide? He wondered, spontaneously thinking of a few ways. There is only one sure way. Put your oracle device in contact with the suspect's bracelet. But the oracle A.I or the owner can refuse you the access to his system if your authority level is insufficient. Wait, wait. Wait. Jake became agitated hearing this. Do you mean anyone with a higher level of authority could check my paths and data anytime? That's a breach of privacy. It is more complicated than that. Not every information is accessible to the one initiating the forceful contact. Your memories are safe, I can guarantee that. Other shadow guides and paths can't be seen either. However, status, and the numbers of paths currently trodden can be seen. Phew. It is not as bad as what I imagined for a moment. He sighed with relief. So what are the non-sure ways to know when someone follow a path? Observation. Vacant look, latencies in reacting or responding abnormal behavior, eyes focusing or moving from left to right as if reading and so on. If you look carefully enough, you will naturally see flaws appear. Paths are great tools to grant your wishes, but you can't become over.reliant on them. With every living being on earth having an oracle assisting them, you will soon realize that prediction and shadow, guide are not all powerful. They are only tools. A monkey will use a rifle as a stick. Don't be the monkey. As you improve yourself more and more, new paths will open to you. So from now on, you can't be lazy as you had always been. Otherwise, you will be left behind on the starting line. She's warning repeated in a loop inside his head, while he yawned. At last, Morpheus's arms were coming for him. Good night she. He said half dot asleep. She responded softly a few minutes later. Jake's serene breathing showed how deeply asleep he was. Good night Jake. I hope you can still sleep peacefully like this when you will know what the future holds for your planet. Jake never heard her last sentence, his consciousness already blown away by the wind of sleepiness. Chapter 11 VR Center You are listening at NovelFull.audio Beep, beep, this morning, Jake woke up fast. He just smashed the turn.off button with a quick move. He was excited about his first day at work in the company of she. His job was rather boring, but he could talk to she with his mind, or pass his time formulating some wishes. It would also allow him to figure out the limits of the oracle bracelet. Yawning, he went to the restroom, you know, to lose some excess weight. When he sat down on the icy throne, his buttocks met a silky dot-like black fur instead of the supposed to be toilet seat. Hiss. He jumped so high that he almost knocked himself into the ceiling. Fuck. He cursed, the few remnants of his sleepiness totally gone. What is this dumb cat doing? Crunch don't drink the water inside the toilet. I don't think Crunch drank any water. According to my data, he was excreting. Thanks Sherlock, I can smell that. He retorted aggressively. But my question is, why the hell is he doing that? Have I not bought for him a litter yesterday especially because cats don't do this? You are right. She confirmed with the same apathetic tone. 
but what is the most convenient for you? Having to clean up his litter every day with the stench that comes with it or having a cat able to use the toilet. The sharp response Jake had in mind remained stuck between his teeth. Indeed, what was the most practical for him? With a procrastinator like him, the answer was obvious. If this cat could use the restroom, why should he stop him? Hell, other people with cats would even be jealous of him. Then, what did it mean? Whether it was the $500 or this cat using the toilet in order to make his life easier, it all followed a path. From what he deduced, this cat probably had a fear of being rejected and wanted to be loved. As a result, one of his paths should have been adjusting his behavior so that he would seem so much more pleasant for his new owner, him. These oracle devices were incredible. Professional tamers must be so depressed right now, seeing some alien pieces of junk doing a better job at training animals than themselves. Well, tamers too had an oracle bracelet right now, so it was not all bad. Jake patiently waited outside that Crunch finished his little private matter. Speechless, he heard after a while the loud toilet flush, followed soon after by a leisurely black cat strutting out of the restroom with a cocky gait. Hail the Oracle. Twenty minutes later he was showered and dressed. He was wearing a black T-dot shirt this time, brown slacks and the same white pair of sneakers. He decided to dissimulate his bracelet. This way no one could initiate contact with his oracle device against his will. It was not perfect, but it was reassuring for him. The news channel confirmed what he already expected. The lottery's jackpot of the day before had been shared between more than 100,000 people. From a $5 million reward, it had become less than $50. Better than nothing, but insignificant compared to the original sum. Casinos, betting establishments were almost all closed. Down by now. The stock market had begun to stabilize. Policemen made a big catch, arresting tens of serial killers, rapists, and burglars that had spread terror for years but whose shadows couldn't even be seen. Simultaneously, many crimes happened. One famous woman singer had been charged by a giant crowd of fanatic fans while she was having a secret date with her boyfriend. They were disguised and shouldn't have been recognized, but all these fans were waiting for them at their supposed to be secret meeting place. In the end, she had been jostled so much by the hard. Fan army that they were now treated by a psychologist specialized in post. Traumatic stress disorder. The woman singer even cancelled her upcoming tour, henceforth shivering just by hearing the words, crowds, and fans. Comparatively, one random university student succeeded to get a date with an idol from her favorite boy band. Another criminal on the run that had already been locked by his pursuers had miraculously vanished after a high-dot-speed car chase that seemed right out of a video-dot-game. Some animals escaped from zoos or circus or had unusual behavior like crunch. It must also be mentioned that a wave of suicides had also struck most cities of Earth. New sects were also rising up from nowhere, multiplying like cockroaches. Well, nothing to worry about. He was still as asocial as ever, hating his work, but at least he had his oracle bracelet to face the coming trials. This time, Jake let the black cat at home. Cautious, he even took his spare key with him. He was afraid of Crunch suddenly desiring to breathe some fresh air, and following a path that would show him how to open a locked door. Unlikely, sure, but hey, better safe than sorry. Once outside his building, he waved his hand to the first cab he saw. Fortunately for him, this one was empty. The taxi driver was a moribund middle-aged man with oily gray hair and mustache. The man was not talkative, possibly lacking sleep. It was quite reasonable with all the unforeseen developments from yesterday. Streets were once again lively, but still not as crowded as before. Some people dealt with alien gifts more easily than others. During the ride, he scrutinized bystanders out the window, trying to figure out which ones were moving along their shadow guide. It was harder than expected. Some people effectively had a vacant look but they could also be simply lost in their thoughts. There were also those that stopped abruptly in the middle of a movement. These ones were obvious to distinguish. 
All the others in between were either not following a path or far subtler than his observation skills could manage. Twenty minutes later, Jake got out of the vehicle after having paid his bill. Taxis were affordable for most people in the 22nd century as they ran on electricity and were mostly autonomous. It should be embarrassing to charge excessively taxi customers when the cars were on automatic pilot. In front of him was a gigantic shopping center. Once inside on the second floor, a logo with VRGF written on it could be seen on the left side of the elevator. The exterior wall was painted black, though highlighted by some red lights akin to lasers crawling over the wall. A high-dot-tech ceiling projector was playing a game cinematic fully reconstituted with holograms. He walked into his working place. Nobody. He was not disliking this. The fewer people the better. Though, the grating had already been unlocked and hiked up, so sadly he was not alone. To the right, the official VR store. It sold anything related to virtual reality technology, from VR helmet, VR suits, video dot games and multidirectional treadmills to memberships allowing to use freely the VR arcade dot rooms. Naturally, nothing of these were cheap. To the left the access to the arcade rooms. There were 30 of them. 20 of them were standards room accredited for official competitions. They were 5 meters long by 5 meters wide rooms with giant treadmills, hanging equipment and a set of cameras. The other rooms were much more spacious and could be used for working out in VR environments or be booked by organized group events. The biggest one was never used and was, in fact, the staff room where they could relax around a cup of coffee, have lunch together or play VR video dot games themselves. The VR engineer job Jake landed a few months ago had not much to do with actual engineering. He was just loafing around at the VR store reception, once in a while greeting a new customer that needed a piece of advice about the new costly toy he was deemed to purchase. He also had to look after the VR materials and tools from the arcade rooms or help the newbies to familiarize themselves with VR equipment. The cushy job of his dreams, but boring as fuck. Just as he was about to make himself some tea, he heard some noise coming from within the staff locker room. A few minutes later, a puny man walked out of the changing room. This guy was the spitting image of Harry Potter, but with red curly hair. A draft version, though. He was small, about 5 feet 5, lacked sun as many workers in VR centers. He even had a scar in the middle of his forehead, but instead of a bolt of lightning, it looked like a constellation birthed from the remnant craters of a very virulent acne. Disgusting. Did we mention Harry Potter's franchise was still going strong in the 22nd century? Last week the movie Grandpa Potter and the Magic Retirement Home had been released. Already the most bankable movie of the year. Never let a good making that money license going to waste. Oh, shit, he felt some vomit in his mouth. He forced himself to swallow it down. Dot in short, his colleague was the typical nerd, sedentary, few friends, but with a very strong drive to be happy. One of the few Jake could qualify as a friend. He had a weird foreign accent from Eastern Europe and was two years older than him. And yes, he was also called Harry. Harry Stylinski. Chapter 12 First Mission You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Hey Jake. Harry greeted with a relieved expression. I thought you would not come. Yesterday, it was only me and Camille. Camille because she's the manager and I because I need the money. It was all for nothing in the end. We haven't seen any customers. He looked like he was about to cry, so Jake abstained from ignoring him like every other morning. Yes, they were friends. Harry enjoyed the sound of his voice and Jake wasn't bothered enough to interrupt him. A win-dot-win -win situation. Hi, Harry. You mean you were alone shitting yourself, right? Jake chuckled. Despite not talking much, he understood his co-worker very well. A real chatterbox, but with a deep inferiority complex. Harry was neither brave nor the sharpest knife of the drawer. 
He had once surprised him shrieking like a panic-stricken maiden more than once because of a simple wasp landing on his shoulder. There was also the spider accident where Paul Baker, the hunk of this VR center, had pranked him with a false tarantula. Or maybe he was just scared of insects. Don't mention it. He yelled, patting his traumatized heart. It was the worst day ever. An alien spaceship, a fucking drone pursuing me non-stop as if I owed it something. And when this oracle bracelet activated, the fucking aid that I they gave me was a damn smutty old man. I immediately tried to change my setting, but the AI told me he was the perfect choice according to his data. The heck. Jake was with great difficulty refraining himself from bursting into laughter. He could only thank his good luck for being blessed with someone like she. He still didn't know what appearance she would have, but at least it wouldn't be some crappy old man. Satisfied now. I can still send a request to the overseer to ask for a replacement, if you wish so. She intervened politely. Irk, I'm good. He quickly refused her offer. He had no aspiration to form a cursed band with Harry. You. Who are you talking to? Your Oracle AI. Harry asked with enthusiasm. How is its voice? Man, woman. Darth Vader. A woman. Is it even possible to choose a tampered voice like this? You can. My AI had fun with his voice parameters for hours before settling down for a nauseating fawning voice. Harry told him with a jaded face. His AI appeared to be a defective product compared to she. Dot. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Gramps. What kind of shitty luck do I need to have to get an old codger like you? Harry yelled suddenly with unfocused eyes. Good, I thought he was insulting me for no reason. His oracle AI was clearly messing up with him. Though, he believed she when she said the AIs were not chosen randomly. This nerdy guy certainly needed an old bastard to teach him how to grow a pear. All of a sudden, they heard stomping noises closing in on them. They could recognize these stiletto heels from 50 meters away. They belonged to Camille Ells, their superior and manager of this VRGR center. When she walked into the staff room, her smile took their breath away. Hello, boys. Oh, Jake came too. Let's hope for Thru and Paul to be present as well. Otherwise, we're taking the risk to be understaffed today with the qualifying rounds. Wah, what? Why am I only learning this this morning? Jake flared up with an indignant look that was crying how betrayed he felt. Maybe, because you never gave a shit to anything happening in this center Jake. She retorted with a smile that was not really one. Dot well, she was not wrong. Jake preferred keeping his silence on this one. It was hard to stay angry with Camille anyway. Regardless of his efforts, he was unable to stare at her in the eyes for long. Introvert and uncomfortable with excessively beautiful girls as always. And beautiful she was. Camille Ells was a gorgeous blonde a few years older than them, but under 30. She was six feet tall with her high heels. She also had a curvy body kept in shape thanks to long hours of cardio training. Completing this portrait, her skin was suntanned all year round, revealing how superficial she was. With her professional suit and black dot-rimmed glasses, she was the typical alpha woman, perfectly cut out to order around a bunch of nerds. Except for Jake that had almost irrepressible procrastinator instincts, all the other male employees were at her beck and call. Jake landed the job only a few months ago. Therefore, he knew nothing about what these qualifying rounds entailed. But, somehow he could tell it wouldn't be a cakewalk. He still was hopeful, though. Many people were still affected by all this alien thingy, so with a bit of luck, most of the competitors wouldn't come. Their VR center didn't contain enough rooms to host the main competition anyway. Qualifying rounds happened in every VR arcade dot rooms around the world. They were used to sort the wheat from the chaff. VRGF competitions were the new Olympic Games and it was basically possible to compete in anything. Athletics, martial arts, tennis, 
fencing, and so on. Naturally, FPS, RPG, and strategic games were still the most popular. Some of these famous VR games were even used for teaching purposes. Firefighters, militaries, pilots, special forces. Many of them were former VR professional players having won prestigious competitions or tournaments. Of course, it was under the premise that you didn't cheat. In the end, Fru and Paul didn't come to work. For Harry and Jake it was a piece of good and bad news at the same time. Their absence proved that even easy works like theirs were already too much to deal with for average people. Logically, serious competitors should have far higher dropout rates compared to them as they would refuse to compete with their actual mindset. If enough competitors asked for reporting the qualifying rounds, they would have at least an easy week. The bad news was that if they were wrong and the competition was maintained, they would be missing two helping hands. Camille has her own office to work so they rarely talk to her during the day except when they were taking short breaks or having lunch. Jake and Harry busied themselves putting in order every VR rooms, restocking the VR store, and doing some maintenance for the few VR gears that had been defective lately. At 9 o'clock a.m., Camille walked out from her office and announced to them that the competition was indeed cancelled until further notice. Hooray! They could relax now. They exchanged jokes in the staff room around a cup of coffee, not expecting any customers at all. It was a boring morning. Camille had this boss air that made it impossible for them to talk to her normally. Their dirty jokes were swallowed back and they didn't dare to talk about topics that only nerds had the secret. She didn't say a word either. Coaching proposed many times some random challenges that his system had judged as great opportunities but were in fact just ways to torture him. It could be something like run 10 kilometers, do 100 push.ups, 100 pull.ups, 100 squats, and 100 sit.ups, but there were also some requests much more terrifying. For example, when Camille was drinking coffee with them, coaching proposed him to maintain eye contact with her for at least 20 seconds. Can you imagine how creepy he would seem to her if he really did that? The funny thing was that there were true benefits to get from this trial. Rewards Self.confidence plus 2% communication skill Plus 1% Social anxiety 0.10% Authority level Plus 1% Rank up at 100% Camille will see you in a new light this tantalizing reward was only obtainable if Camille put an end first to their eye contact. His stare also had to be confident but not forceful, otherwise, he would pass for a shy nerd deeply in love with her or at worst a disgusting pervert. If he failed, he was condemned to feel a deep shame that would probably let him embarrassed for days. Did he succeed? No, he failed miserably. He broke eye contact after 1.3 seconds. He couldn't see her, but he had the feeling she facepalmed herself watching him. He could feel the punishment meaning. Self.confidence.2% It was unsettling how the oracle could quantify these emotions and states of mind, but it was undoubtedly accurate. If he followed the coach's suggestions he could probably solve his social anxiety problem in a few days. Most phobias could easily be solved like that after all. Feeling shameful, he excused himself justifying that the VR store needed someone to watch over it. He envisaged taking a nap to forget, lying down with his feet on the reception desk. However, the outside ring tone announcing new customers rang out not even 10 minutes after he started to relax. At the same time, the coach gave him his first real mission. A mission, that made his eyes pop out of his head when he saw it. Mission. Take care of this customer as if it was your soul mate. Chapter 13 Expectations and Reality You are listening at NovelFull.audio His first reaction seeing the content of this mission was to ask she if the coaching ability could joke. Of course, the answer was negative. The coaching missions were always considered as great opportunities by the Oracle. It would be a regrettable mistake to ignore them in the long run. Holding eye contact or doing push.ups were more like daily challenges than real missions. They were beneficial to him, 
but they were simply trying to push him out of his comfort zone. Encouraging him to become a better version of himself. According to Xi, missions with a defined objective were different. They concerned his future. Prediction couldn't tell him to what extent they would be relevant in the years to come, but they definitely couldn't be tossed aside. One main rule of the oracle was that the purpose of its existence was to serve the interests and ambitions of his owner. It could have other secret agendas but this one rule couldn't be broken. Then what did all this mean? Was the person that would enter his true soul mate or was it someone so important for him that it should assuredly be treated as such? Regardless of the truth, he couldn't fail this mission. However, Jake had butterflies in his stomach right now. If it was his soul mate, he could only assume she would be super dot hot. He couldn't describe with certainty the ideal girl of his dreams, but she should be a 10 out of 10. It didn't matter whether she had white, black or blue skin, she had to be cute, with beautiful long hair, big breasts, and nice bottom. She should have a thin athletic body, but still look feminine. Of course, she would also have perfectly smooth skin. If she could also be intelligent but not too much, obedient but with just what is needed of temper, and at last share the same hobbies as him. Damn, it was so contradictory just to imagine it. Could such a girl really exist? Men fantasized about such women because they couldn't exist. It wouldn't even be a good thing for such a person to exist. She would be destined to be toyed by the lucky man that would capture her heart. Strong and smart, but submissive, loving but not jealous, devoted but not possessive. An absurd life, whose ambitions and dreams would have been sacrificed in the name of love. In consequence, his soulmate, if she existed, was definitely not a woman that could be fantasized about. As for Harry and his seemingly defective A.I, his soulmate would probably be very dissimilar to the one from his expectations. The real question was to which point. Indeed, his instincts were sharp for once. His soul mate was nothing like the beautiful babe he was expecting for. When the new customer walked into the VR center hall, or rather rolled, Jake almost got a fright. Yes, it was a young woman early 20 dot something. But, damn. She was so ugly. If not for the mission reminder, he would have probably failed right from the start. He was not the kind to be mean or disrespectful based on appearance, but there was something repulsive with this girl. In any other situation, he would have served this customer with his most apathetic look, maybe a slight smile. It would have been a relief for both of them. He didn't have to fake his attitude and she wouldn't have felt judged. That was how handicapped people wanted to be treated most of the time. They wanted their handicap to become accepted and seen as something normal, but at the same time, they would rarely laugh if you tried to joke openly about it. Very few of them would be able to mock themselves. The reason was that their greatest complex, their deepest dreams, would often be related to their handicap. It was not unusual to hear paralyzed people dreaming about walking, running, or biking. An armless person would be a hardcore basketball fan, a mute would dream of becoming a superstar singer. It was the very definition of a human being to lust after what couldn't be obtained. This young woman was lying in a wheelchair. Her legs looked like hairless chicken drumsticks. It was not just some stumps, but more like if the legs had stopped growing midway. If you had seen how ugly could be a nestling chick at birth, you could probably relate. She suffered from grave scoliosis, making her spine strangely twisted to the left. If it was the only asymmetrical detail it would have been fine, but she was as flat as a chopping board and her nose warped to the right this time. Her skin was not smooth at all. It appeared to be callous, rough like some badly made cow leather. She was obviously younger than him, but her skin was already showing early signs of wrinkling. Her long wavy hair was white like snow. Though, not the beautiful winter snow you imagined, but rather the one after someone peed on it. It was hard like straw but thin like the hair from an old hag. Dot damn, she was truly ugly. If there was something really unique that could redeem this somber description, that would be her eyes. She had different colored eyes. 
The left eye was a deep marine blue while the right one was amethyst.colored. It was just a detail, but Jake had never seen such eyes. It was enough to catch his attention. Despite her terrible appearance, her eyes were full of spirit. She didn't seem to care about how he scrutinized her, as if she had long been used to the reactions her physique could trigger. She determinately moved her wheelchair to his reception desk. Remembering the mission and she's warning, Jake got a hold of himself, acting as if it was his cousin in front of him. Fortunately, it was not so hard. As an introvert, it would have been impossible to act normally before a top model, but with a woman like this. It was effortless. Hello young lady, what can I do to help you? He asked with a friendly smile. The disabled woman stopped an instant slightly disconcerted. There was something off with this receptionist attitude. It was unlike anything she was used to. Where was the condescending look full of disdain or pity? It was almost as if he didn't care. Almost. She owed her cursed appearance to the false Third World War. Her parents lived on the outskirts of London when the city was nuked. Not even 15 kilometers away from the capital. They had seen the weird multicolored light, listened to the frightened screams reverberating from afar. The couple didn't evacuate immediately. As many ignorant people, they just waited, staying comfy at home. Then they watched how a military bomber flew above them to finally drop the nuclear bomb that would destroy their future. The couple was not in the impact zone, so they survived just fine. However, as communications were cut off for a time, they waited again for official instructions from the authorities. This waiting forfeited their lives. The nuclear cloud reached far beyond London's suburb. Because London had a rainy weather, the radioactive fallout didn't spare them. It rained buckets of radioactive water for days and no one could escape this unscathed. When it stopped raining, nuclear dust had infiltrated everything. When the nuclear winter officially began and her parents were finally evacuated, it was too late. Her father having been exposed to the rain died a few weeks later from global body necrosis while her mother, less exposed, survived a few months. At this time, she was already pregnant. She lived the last months of her life in a hospital under permanent medical care. A caesarean gave birth prematurely to her daughter. After her mother's death, she was sent to live at her aunt's home. At this point, the teratogenic properties of the radiations had already caused irreversible damages. She was certainly not the only poor orphan born like this, but not many of them survived with so many complications. It couldn't be seen from her exterior appearance, but she also had congenital heart disease. Her heart was misshapen, not strong enough to pump blood efficiently. She had to wear support stocking under her clothes to avoid edemas and was easily tired. She also had a very weak immune system that made her easily fall sick. Her life was a living hell, but she still wanted to find happiness. However, Jake was not wrong thinking she desired what she couldn't have. In the 22nd century, it was not hard to regrow some limbs by 3D printing her new legs. Scoliosis could also be taken care of. Even her defective heart could be replaced. However, all this was under the assumption you could pay for it. Those kinds of advanced technologies would definitely not be wasted on a cripple like her. Most of all, her body was very weak. It was unsure if she could endure such a surgery. Are you okay miss? Inquired Jake with a concerned voice, drawing her out of her thoughts. I'm fine. She answered with an almost inaudible voice. Her voice was surprisingly mellifluous and had nothing of the roughness her appearance presumed. So, how can I help you? I am here for the qualifying rounds. She answered sincerely. Oh, have you not seen the announcement on the internet? The VRGF competition has been cancelled because of the Oracle's device's impact. Too many competitors asked for a deferment. She suddenly grimaced as if she was about to dissolve in tears. This VR competition seemed very important to her. Don't worry, it's probably just delayed for a few days. The time for people to adapt. To be frank, 
you are our first customer of the day. He explained patiently to her the situation. She finally calmed down. It was not easy for her to come here alone with her wheelchair. Can I use a VR room then? They should all be free at the moment. She asked with her hope renewed. Indeed, they are. I just need a name for the register. Jake confirmed. Ruby. Ruby Hale. Chapter 14 The Customer is King You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ruby Hale If a god existed somewhere, it truly had a dark humor. Hale She was disabled. A ruby. Who were they trying to dupe? Perhaps her mother had a nice sense of humor too. Or she just wanted the best for her daughter, perfectly knowing that she wouldn't see her grow up. Jake could be quite harsh with his thoughts, but he was not stupid. Such mutations could only be caused by excessive radiation. If her mother was still alive right now that would be a miracle considering the state of her daughter. All right Ruby. That's a beautiful name. You can take your pick, as all the rooms are available at the moment. I don't think we will see any other customers today. He said, trying to stay polite but cordial. Then, can I have a full immersion room? She inquired, a little giddy with excitement. Yes, you can. We have three rooms like this. If I may ask, why would you need such a room? Even people using them often turn off the room's special effects to avoid being distracted when they're playing. I thought you were here for the qualifying rounds. Jake asked, a little bit curious. Ruby looked at him as if she was not sure if he was serious or not. You work in a VRGF center and had never played VR games with all the environment simulators activated. She was truly doubtful now. Was there really someone playing VR games so wrongly? I ceased playing VR games, without cheating that is, a long time ago. How could I enjoy playing a game that needs me to run for hours to, in the end, lose against some cheaters sat on a couch in a relaxed way. Where is the fun in this? Now, Ruby was really staring at him as if he truly was an idiot. You mean, you have never tried to play a VR game just to relax or experience something new? Jake was perplexed. Why would he waste time like this? As real as VR could seem, it was not. Yet, millions of people loved simulation games. It was beyond him. Mm, I don't think so. He answered sincerely. You should. You have no idea what you're missing. Her eyes now showed some pity, as if he was an abandoned child having lost his way. Well, there is no customer apart from you, so I could as well follow your advice and try one this afternoon. Why not now? I can show you my favorite simulation game. You will definitely have fun. I need help anyway to equip the VR gear and attach myself correctly. She proposed to him. Jake thought about her suggestion for a few seconds. He didn't want to experience anything at the moment. He was originally planning to take a nap before her arrival. But if he refused, he would definitely fail the mission as the shadow guide wanted him to accept. Whatever. He could as well follow the path until the end. Despite her ugliness, she was easygoing and easy to talk to. At least, he didn't feel any bad intention. All right. I will try, but that's really just to make you happy as I'm pretty sure my opinion about this won't change. He still expressed a reservation. After this, Jake politely proposed to push her wheelchair to one of the VR rooms and she willingly accepted, visibly used to being assisted during her previous VR center visits. If it is not too personal, are you always coming alone? I am sure I have never seen you here before. He asked, trying to make conversation. It is my first time in this center. My aunt is here at New Paris for a business trip, so I came with her. As she is busy, I took a cab alone. She explained. Mm, I see. That's why you have such a British accent. After the Earth government establishment, most French learned how to speak English, using French less and less, 
but our accent is still quite easy to distinguish. Yes, most languages are disappearing fast with the new Earth government. It is surprising no countries fight for their cultural identity. It would have been unthinkable a few decades ago. Now English, Chinese and Russian have become the dominant languages as they are ruling the earth in turns. Well, these languages haven't vanished yet. Old people don't adapt so easily and many families use their native language at home. Jake assured her it wouldn't be so fast for the earth to be united under one tongue. BDNV Jake opened for her the VR room she had chosen, letting her put down her jacket on one of the resting seats in the room. In spite of the summer heatwave, Ruby had a cold body, unable to warm up. Now I need you to help me equipping the VR gear. She reminded him with a shy voice. Oh, okay. It is just the first time I have to help someone to equip this, so I'm not sure how I should proceed. He admitted slightly embarrassed. No worries. It's quite simple. She promised with a confident tone. Just pass me the VR suit and let me get changed. Oh, ah uh, yes I need to go out, of course. Jake waited patiently outside the VR room for his customer to finish changing herself. When she called him, he walked back inside. Then, what should I do now? He asked for the next step. Just bring my wheelchair on the treadmill under the straps hanging from the ceiling of the VR capsule. Jake obeyed pushing her to the right position. Okay, now I need you to attach the straps to my VR suit. Once it is done, adjust the strap's length so that I'm not too close to the ground. I can do it myself if you carry me for a few seconds. She suggested, her face going red. Jake awkwardly took her in his arms, Princess Carrie style. Ruby was very light and bony according to his finger's feedback where they touched her body. As ugly and handicapped as she was, he couldn't help himself but think how nice she smelled. It was a scent very different from the deathly one he expected. If he had one bad sense to mention, that would be his sense of smell. For that matter, the oracle status was formal about this. His perception stat was 10 points as every healthy male, but when he had looked at his sub.attributes, he had discovered his sense of smell only had 7 points. His sight and hearing were above average, though. To return to the subject, she smelled nice, but he was unable to describe this fragrance, even less put a name on it. He wouldn't recognize the scent of roses if he smelled it, even less so a complex perfume like this one. All he could say was that it reminded him in a way the fragrance of red berries. Ruby quickly adjusted the strap's length, then did a double knot, showing how experienced she was. You can let go of me now. It should hold just fine. Jake released her body. She was now hanging in the air thanks to the straps. You said, you were here for the qualifying rounds, right? Then how were you supposed to compete without legs? Jake realized after asking that his question was a bit too personal, but he had worried for nothing. Ruby didn't seem to care at all. I only play mage classes that can fly. Disabled people can fill in a form when playing VR games to explain the nature of their handicap. Most games adjust the gameplay like this depending on your disabilities. It makes sense. He nodded with an expression of understanding. So what simulation game am I supposed to try with you? He asked again. That's a surprise. Change in a VR suit then tie yourself up exactly like I did. Put a VR helmet then I will invite you in the game. She explained. When it came to the game she loved, Ruby was quite confident and decisive. Slightly expectant now, Jake hurried in another simulation room. The main difference with normal VR rooms was that they could simulate rain, wind, sand and so on. For this, the multidirectional treadmill, the walls, and ceiling of the capsule needed to be built differently. They needed to be porous to facilitate the passage of air, water or any other matters improving the immersion. Once fully equipped and tied up, he turned on the VR helmet. He logged with his real name. Even, if Ruby didn't know it, he was the only other person online in the center. 
After a while, he received Ruby's invitation. Invitation accepted. Chapter 15 Having fun you are listening at novelfull.audio All of a sudden, the scenery around him changed. He could still sense how he was suspended from the ceiling, but he was now in a small size plane, with a 20.2 something woman standing in front of him. There was only space for a few persons, the furnishing was minimalist. You could hear a loud throbbing from the plane engine and high dot speed rotating propeller. It was the typical private touristic plane transporting thrill dot seekers desiring to skydive. Jake carefully inspected himself. He was carrying a parachute. Ruby had one on her back too. He now understood what simulation game she wanted him to play. Jake's composure didn't change, though. He was still totally impervious to the situation. Skydiving. So what? Was it real? Could he die? Was he even falling? In the end, he was just hanging one meter above the floor. But he swallowed his cutting remarks for himself when he saw her confident eyes. She was convinced he would change his mind. For his first mission's well. Being, he persevered with this farce. Ruby had legs in the game and her appearance was very different. Her skin was smooth, her chest filled out her clothing this time and her shiny wavy hair was snow white. Clean snow this time. Only her eyes stayed the same. One deep blue, the other one amethyst dot colored. So what should we do? He broke the ice. With the roaring engine noises, he had to shout just to hear himself. Look out the window. When the plane will be at his highest, his altitude will stabilize and the pilot will signal us it is time for us to jump. All right, let's wait then. He said, still as placid as ever. He truly didn't care at all. Did you turn on all the simulation special effects in your VR room? She reminded him. Of course, I'm not stupid. Oh sorry. After this, they stayed silent, waiting patiently for the tourist plane to reach the right altitude. When the ladder was more than 30,000 feet above the ground, it finally ceased to climb up. Standard parachute jumps were done at 12,000 feet, but it was a game. There was no need to worry about a lack of oxygen or dangerous temperature in the negatives. The pilot knocked on the locked door isolating the cockpit, informing them they could begin. Ruby decisively opened the glazed door isolating them from the outside. It looked like any other windows of this plane and could easily get mixed up. At this point, Jake still felt indifferent to all of this. The cold wind was slapping his face, but he could still sort of imagine the powerful ventilator functioning at full capacity. Then, he familiarized himself with the strips used to release the main parachute and the rescue one if the former was defective. Naturally, in a game, it was all for visual realism purposes. The first parachute would always be triggered as it was supposed to. There was also an altimeter to check your altitude anytime on your wrist. Once ready, he stared at Ruby, awaiting the next step. And now. Now, we jump. She pushed him off the plane head first. Dot his body was thrown upside down in an instant. The blood rushed to his hair, the air whipping him stronger and stronger as his speed soared. His heart was pumping faster and faster despite all his efforts to remind himself it was just an illusion. He was upside down in reality too as the straps attached to him were rigid enough to allow the VR capsule to change his position. The ropes hanging him were partly composed with nano-dot components that could easily change their structure, becoming harder or more flexible depending on the game script they followed. Whilst Jake was still trying to adapt to the new sensations, Ruby passed by him at full speed, diving like a comet toward the ground. It was clearly not her first time doing this. He tried to spread his arms and legs in order to stabilize himself, but he was pathetically failing at the moment. As his speed got faster and faster, his adrenaline levels skyrocketed, making his ability to reason less and less predominant. Yet, he could still convince himself all of this was fake. But as he was repeating to himself how false this simulation game was, his reptilian brain was going into a panic more and more. 
His fall speed broke through 200 km per hour, while he skydived under the 6,000 feet mark. After this, he truly lost his cool and was barely able to grasp the environment around him. The trees were growing before his very eyes, just like the buildings of the city below. 3,000 feet. Jake couldn't find Ruby anymore, she was too fast. The fact that he was alone, almost one kilometer above the ground didn't help him to get a grip on himself. Somehow, he succeeded to snap out of his irrational fear. He remembered that he just had to tug at the strip when he would be close to 1,000 feet. Then he would just have to enjoy the sight and relax until his landing. Unfortunately, he was out of luck. When he went down under 1,000 feet, he tugged at his parachute's trigger, but nothing happened. His panic then gladly resumed with greater intensity. As his fall continued, he scratched his head looking for a solution, almost pulling off a few strands of hair. When Jake finally remembered that he still had a rescue parachute, he triggered it. However, he was already very close to the ground by then. The irony was that the rescue parachute didn't work either. At this moment, he saw himself splattering on a bus like an overripe fruit falling off his tree. Unconsciously, he averted his eyes at the last second, covering them with his hands. His heart skipped a beat and his breathing stopped. He really saw his entire life passing before his eyes as if he was truly about to die. Nonetheless, the crushing sound he was expecting didn't come. When he reopened his eyes, he realized he was floating a meter above the bus he was supposed to smash onto. He was miraculously alive. He couldn't help himself but burst into laughter, tiny tears in the corner of his eyes. He felt so much relief that it seemed unreal. He became aware that despite all his laziness he had never felt so happy and relaxed. Then he heard some stifled laughs, rapidly becoming louder and louder. PFFFFFFT, mwahahaha. I got you, right. If you could see your face when you thought you were going to die. Hahaha, ha, ha, you made my day. I can't stop laughing. Ruby was there behind him, curled up on the ground, spasming irregularly between two fit of laughter. Her face was flushed and she was huffing and puffing between her giggles. She had totally cracked up. Realizing it was her plan from the start, Jake couldn't help but feel a deep shame. His face also reddened in consequence. She had totally seen through him and gave him a memorable lesson. To be honest, Jake had enjoyed his first parachute jump. He now knew that even an illusion could feel real. He was eager to try again. All right, I admit my defeat. Now stop laughing stupidly like this. He said with an exasperated face. A few minutes later, Ruby finally calmed down. In the end, she made him try many simulation games during this afternoon. There hadn't been any new customer after her, so he didn't have to be begged to keep playing with her. Harry and Camille didn't bother them either, probably bogged enough with their own preoccupations. From the several simulation games Ruby made him play, he soon realized that they were all related to high dot speed and freedom. Ruby's favorite was a flying simulator. Not flying in the sense of piloting planes, but a real Superman flying mode. You could basically fly at any speed around the earth. Even Jake had a lot of fun looking for his own house. They visited many historical monuments, flew above the oceans, even tried to go up to the moon. Curious, they also visited the nuked cities. It was obvious however that the game was lacking information about these areas. Except for some ashy sands, there was nothing else in these wastelands. When finally came the time to close the VRGF center, Jake could sincerely declare that he had passed one of the best day from his whole life. And at work, on top of that. He said goodbye to Ruby, wishing her a safe return to New London with her aunt. Jake knew he probably wouldn't see her again before a long time and surprisingly felt a little sad deep inside him. She was still one of the ugliest girl he had ever seen, but comparatively, her inner beauty was resplendent. Even long after she left the VR center, Jake was still lost in his thoughts. He completely ignored the notification coming from the coaching function, 
still wondering himself when they would meet again. Tomorrow. In a few years. The oracle would never answer. First mission. Take care of the next customer as if it was your soulmate, mission accomplished. Perfect rating. Chapter 16 Missing Cases You are listening at NovelFull.audio Rewards First good impression on Ruby Hale. She will remember you. Communication skills. Plus one, having fun and talking normally is enough to crack your shell of loneliness, authority level. Plus 5%, 5 out of 100 before next rank up, ENV by themselves, the rewards seem to be lacking. However, it was needed to consider the fact that there were no real missions rewards except for the increase of his authority level experience gauge. The rest was what he obtained by his own efforts. Even his communication skill improving was not so strange. He was an introvert, solitary and cynical, with an apathetic attitude for about everything. Just forcing himself to follow the path of this mission had constrained him to go out from his comfort zone. Add to this that Ruby was the opposite of his physical ideal, he truly had pushed himself beyond his limits. At least at the beginning. After a while, he had finished by enjoying it, which made this mission effortless towards the end. He could sort of feel that his behavior had a breakthrough at some point. He acted more natural and didn't feel like he had to force himself to keep the conversation and the fun going. He also found out that things he judged boring or uninteresting could turn out very differently when done with the right persons. Strangely all of this was enough to push his communication skill up to 5 points instead of the former 4 points. The average adult human having 10 points he was still considered abnormally bad at communicating. According to she, even a somewhat shy person could lie or act normally when needed. Comparatively, Jake could not. First, being a social made him far less expressive than the average person. Even if he found one million dollars under his pillow by waking up one morning, he probably wouldn't even smile. But he would be really happy inside. It was a typical issue with nerds and people isolating themselves too much. They could easily use smileys, emoticons or abbreviations like LOL or LMAO, but their real face behind the screen would always be deadpan. In the long run, it would create discrepancies between what they really felt and how they were behaving. Jake was no exception. 5% of the points needed to rank up his authority level was not bad either, but without any repercussions on his current life. He would need to satisfy many more of the coaching's whims before seeing real changes. She, what does improving my oracle rank can do for me? Should this be one of my new priorities? He inquired his favorite Adara, getting her out of her slumber. She had been silent nearly the whole day. It is very important. But I can't tell you exactly why as your authority level is insufficient. She explained patiently. What I can tell you though is that improving your oracle rank has many uses. Firstly, you will be less and less restricted when it comes to search for information. The higher your rank, the more detailed the information you can get. I will also be able to answer more freely. Secondly, only the most basic functions of your oracle device are currently unlocked. These available functions can also be upgraded. It also does what the term implies. It gives you more authority when it comes to interacting with other Oracle devices. Remember about putting Oracle devices in contact with each other. The higher rank will be able to access most information, like the status and ongoing paths, without actually getting the consent from the other bracelet's owner. The authority level was much more important than what he had imagined originally. His rank zero would be fine for the time being, but as more people would rank up their Oracle, he would become more vulnerable. After cleaning the VR store and putting in order all the VR equipment, Jake said goodbye to Harry and Camille. He wasn't aware of the difference, but they both felt subconsciously that his jaded face was a little bit less blank today. Jake came back home without meeting any mishaps. Crunch was nonchalantly sleeping on his bed pillow, not even one ear pricking up when he opened his front door. This black cat didn't care about anything as long as he was well-fed and had a roof over his head. 
In this aspect, they were very similar. Intrigued by the news concerning the society changes caused by the oracles, he turned on his TV, while making himself at home. The society was plunged into chaos. Miscellaneous incidents kept coming one after another. Some smart guys discovered they could get any private phone number just by wishing to call the person of their choice. Their shadow guide would tap the number before them and they would just have to imitate it. The Earth's president, ministers, actors and actresses, singers and other celebrities passed an awful day as a result. Fortunately, they soon figured out that it was possible for their Oracle A.I. to filter the incoming calls by themselves. Same as blacklisting a phone number, but much more efficient as it could determine thanks to the coaching ability if answering the unknown calls was actually beneficial. As Jake didn't have many friends, he didn't worry about this. It also had positive consequences though. He could now easily contact anyone. Even Ruby that he just met today, he could call her right now if he wished for it. Of course, he wouldn't do that. Another news startled him. However, it didn't have anything to do with the oracles. There were less and less stray cats and dogs. Other common city birds like pigeons, sparrows or crows were also becoming scarcer. The hiccup was that this phenomenon had been noticed for several months already. It was just that as time kept flying, it became more and more evident and the scientists became more and more alarmist. When he heard this, Jake couldn't help but remember the frightening mouse dragging an agonizing and limbless cat in the darkness. Were the disappearances of these animals such a coincidence? Even if he was twice more stupid, he wouldn't think so. However, there was something even scarier with this matter. The arrival of the Oracle devices should have given an easy solution to find a satisfying explanation. For example, if you remembered any of these stray animals, or if one of your pets was declared missing, you could wish to meet them again in the shortest way. If this wish didn't have any valid path, you could try, where has my pet died? From this, you could even found who or what killed it. Only if his death was natural, from a disease or something of the same kind, could prediction give no results. The issue was that statistically speaking, all stray cats and dogs couldn't go missing for the same reason. Moreover, in this case, dead bodies would have been discovered. There would be clear signs of an epidemic. Wild animals wouldn't drop dead for no reason. There would be precursor symptoms like hair loss, fever, bleeding, inflammation, abnormal behavior and so on. So why couldn't they even find one creature or person responsible? If they were prey for another predator, it should have been identified since then. After all, the oracle bracelets were that powerful. Yet, they didn't. The risk was too high, and the implications of his guess too dreadful. Jake reminisced the agonizing cat traits, then wished he could find its murderer as soon as possible. But prediction stayed mute. No paths were found. He immediately wished to find the mouse directly. Still no results. His ghastly hypothesis had been confirmed. She, can a creature on earth be excluded from the oracle's calculations? Don't lie to me. He ordered with a hoarse voice. Dot. It should be impossible. She admitted. It should, but it is clearly not. He yelled, getting enraged without warning. This mouse had no oracle device and now it can't be found with a path if I wish it. I want the truth. And don't tell me my authority level is insufficient. If I die because of this, you will die with me as we're bound together. She kept her silence for a while. Jake didn't know if she was consulting her database or reporting something to the oracle overseer above her. After what seemed to be an eternity, she answered. Dot. She sighed. Authority level insufficient. Fuck. Listen to me Jake. Your instincts are not wrong, but I can't report this to the oracle overseer. If I do, authority level insufficient. Humans need more time. You need more time to adapt. Raise your oracle's rank and follow the coach. This is your only hope. Our hope. 
Chapter 17 The Way to Survival You are listening at NovelFull.audio At this precise moment, Jake felt a visceral fear coursing through his body, goosebumps all over his skin. As good at procrastinating as he was, he couldn't ignore such an urgency. Lazy people could postpone chores and duties, but not threats to their life. He was too perturbed to undertake anything this evening. He couldn't even muster the energy to cook something. In the end, he just got to bed early. Tomorrow would be a better day. On waking, he felt in great form, but his mood was grim. The right move in this situation was not so clear anymore. There were already things on earth that the oracle's predictions didn't take account of. The oracle should have turned his dull life into an exciting one, full of hopes. Instead, he was back to square one. What was he supposed to do now? That she told him to follow the coaching abilities recommendations. But the latter was silent this morning. From what she said the day before, she couldn't report the situation to the oracle overseer for his own good. However, his personal oracle naturally included in his calculations everything he knew. Bullshit quests like push.up sets or running a few kilometers had been replaced by insufferable mutism. His stress was rising, but no satisfying ideas came to him. Jake did one thing, though. He sent a message to Camille, his superior at work, informing her he would be absent for a prolonged period. Personal reasons. He wasn't worried about lacking money. His investment was already showing great promise. His $40,000 had high return potential. He didn't know it yet, but a big firm had worked on a warp drive engine for three decades in vain. A success would allow humans to build spaceships able to travel faster than light. Light speed couldn't be surpassed, but space and time could be deformed with enough energy. The warping engine made such a feat possible. There were many hurdles to overcome, such as finding an energy source powerful enough, choosing the adequate materials or just solving related mathematical formulas. This firm had been on the verge of bankruptcy for years, surviving thanks to international subventions and donations. With the Oracle's appearance, they overcame their last obstacle. You could imagine the impact of such a technological advance when the patent was registered. Jake was now a happy stockholder of this company. His initial investment had already doubled and would exceed his $400,000 objective in three days at the latest. Unfortunately, it was useless. Jake had the intuition that he wouldn't have the chance to enjoy his wealth for long. He didn't turn on the TV this morning. The news would only be worse. Time has come to take his fate into his own hands. The Wild Earths were smart. That was the absolute truth he was confident of. However, it was also his shackle. The one that made him indolent and passive. It made him doubt himself. He took a deep breath, then began to formulate a series of wishes. I want to survive, I want to become invincible gave no results. It made sense. The oracle couldn't give an impossible path. Even he wouldn't believe it if such a path existed. Therefore, he tried more reasonable wishes. I want to improve my survival chances. I want to become smarter, I want to become a better version of myself. It was nearly not as impressive, but it would do the trick. The prediction ability activated and paths were calculated. This time, the paths produced were sophisticated. They were all similar, but still slightly different according to where the emphasis was put on. After testing these wishes with different deadlines, he realized these paths would take years, but he would get the first benefits in a few days. Priority was given to what could immediately increase his survival rate. The paths had to be safe too. He finally set his choice on a shorter path. However, it would still take close to six months. It was under the assumption he would not slack off even once and follow it to the letter. Rewards Strength plus 10, Agility plus 10, Constitution plus 10, Vitality plus 5, Intelligence plus 3, Perception plus 1, Learning of multiple survival.Related knowledge and skills. It was hard to imagine how many effects it could bring to one's life. 
It wouldn't turn him into a superman, but it was certainly an unreachable goal for most humans before the Oracle's arrival. Three points in intelligence were dubious. It would basically make of him one of the most intelligent guy on Earth. Such paths were interesting because they were in fact subdivided into many steps with their own coaching missions. The reason was that they could be done in any order, although it would be wiser to work on them simultaneously. Mission Improve your knowledge and survival skills. Authority level Plus 40%, a long list of books or activities to perform was given to read and learn by heart. It was not worth considering. With his procrastinator mindset, he would give up far too soon. Mission Improve your communication skills. Authority level Plus 30% Mission Improve your body and brain Authority level Plus 30% As soon as he turned on the paths, he realized it would be painful and costly. His cheap vegan blends were considered unsuitable for his objective. First, he would have to go shopping again. Second, he would have to prepare and cook all his meals. He also had dietary supplements to buy he knew nothing about. Basically, it would cost him an arm and a leg. If you added to the equation the books and the potential lessons he would have to pay for, he would have been ruined in an instant without his prudent investment. He was also asked to buy illegal weapons. In France, you could hardly get hold of firearms without having a specific license. Bladed weapons were different, but swords or katanas were mostly collectibles. Concerning firearms, Jake could call his uncle Kalen. This gentle looking middle aged man had a military background and used to be a colonel. He had retired early in order to begin a career in politics. It was a failure but he still had many contacts. Life was full of surprises. He had not called his uncle for months and was now about to give him a call for the second time in two days. Uncle Kalen answered at the first beep. Hey, Jake. I was thinking I wouldn't hear your voice before a few months with all the money I lent you. The old colonel teased with a somewhat happy tone. Worry not, you will have your money with interests in a few days. He guaranteed. I am calling you for another reason. I need some firearms and a lot of ammunition. Uncle Kalen who was trimming the vegetal hedges around his villa dropped his shears upon hearing his nephew's demand. Have you lost your mind? What do you want a fire weapon for? Obviously, to protect myself. Jake said solemnly. He also decided to warn his uncle. You are not stupid uncle. The government secrecy, the alien spaceship, the recent news. Question your oracle, you will naturally find some anomalies in his answers. If you don't have a gun, you should get one too. Kalen pondered over his words for a while. Maybe, he remembered some recent news or perhaps he was interrogating his own oracle right now. After a few minutes, he had taken his decision. All right. I will have to ask my old friends, but I can definitely get you a proper license. Recently, the dark net has been too risky, so don't try to look there. Jake almost facepalmed. Did this old fox really think he was working for the mafia or something? He didn't even know how to access the dark net. True, he was an eminent cheater at video.games. Yet, except for that and a tiny little bit of illegal downloading, he was a lawful abiding citizen. Afterward, they exchanged small talk with each other before hanging up. Jake also tried to contact his cousin Anya to warn her too, but she couldn't be reached. It was not unusual coming from her, so he didn't fret about this. Jake spent his morning taking care of his grocery list at the commercial center. The previous shopping cart he had kept with him from his last outing was still faithfully accompanying him. When he finally came back home, he had become poor again. However, it was just temporary. His bank account would be back at full health in a few days' time. He fed his cat, relaxed for an hour or so and at last took a deep and resolute breath. The laziness was strong in this one. It wouldn't be easy for him to act the opposite of what his instincts told him. He got dressed in a training outfit that he hadn't worn since his university days. 
At first, he wanted to wear a loose short and T-dot shirt with the intense heat, but the shadow guide had decided he wouldn't do anything right by himself. When Jake got out of his apartment, he was dressed as for a winter workout, even wearing a parka above his outfit. He was sweating like an old pig brought to a slaughterhouse. His motivation was already leaving him. He wanted to go back. But then, he walked by next to the dark back alley that was still giving him nightmares. He couldn't hear any noises inside. He was convinced. There were no stray cats in this lane anymore. The fear struck him back at full power, leaving him panting heavily. When he calmed down, he vowed to himself he would never let a mouse or any other monstrosities fuck with his mind. His determination rose again. His first training of a long series had begun. Chapter 18 New Routines You are listening at NovelFull.audio At that time, Jake made a decision. He would copy each of his shadow guides move till the very end. It would be tough, he would feel bored, may want to give up, but it was the old him. Most people giving in would always be assailed by doubts and uncertainties. Doubting is a powerful thing. It protects you from doing stupid mistakes, prevent blindly trusting and misjudgment. However, it was also your worst enemy as it fed on fear and low self-esteem. Overweight people would dream of losing weight, but they would fail or give up midway. Ignorance, wrong diet choices could be a reason for these failures, but despair was the trigger making them abandon. And what was the best fuel for despair? Doubting oneself. With the oracle, you had the certainty that you were following the most perfect slimming program. It was personalized and would naturally be a success if followed. Popular diet trends were enticing, but if the immediate benefits were not as good as imagined, your willpower would crumble. In psychology, there were several mechanisms implicated that made the failure rate so high. For example, the, I've come this far, might as well finish and, selling off your future excuses. They worked in tandem. In a moment of weakness, you eat one slice of pizza, then two, and finally the entire pizza. But it's okay, because, tomorrow, you will make up for it. An attitude of denial was also a classic. Just once is okay, I won't gain weight with just one ice cream. This kind of denial. The oracle prevented these setbacks. Because it was always right. If you acted differently from your shadow guide, you were wrong. It made you responsible for your failures. But for this to work, you needed to have at least this little bit of faith in your bracelet. Jake precisely intended to do that. The shadow fetch started to run and he obediently followed. You just had to look at him to figure out how bad was his fitness. This footing was a long tunnel with no end. Jake could only look up to the inexhaustible shadow, always pushing forward as if it was nothing. After an unknown amount of time, he collapsed on a sidewalk. In front of him was an enormous physical fitness center. The biggest in New Paris. It had all the facilities you could wish for. A 50m long swimming pool, a weights room, special rooms for dancing, martial arts, yoga, and reshaping programs. The equipment was top-notch and there was a wide range of activities to choose from. This place would be like a second home for him in the next days. Jake was already tired, but the oracle didn't care. He took a gym bag with him, so he had everything needed to train there. Special drinks, gainers, supplements, he was ready. Sportsmen and women were numerous here. The fitness level was also quite high. Shrimps like him were not common. If not for his massive hair and two-dot-weak thick beard, he would have felt unconfident about his manliness. Mission. Get yourself a trendy haircut and shave. Reward. You won't look like a beggar anymore. Authority level. Plus 0.1%, dot. She, it is your doing. Right. The beggar accused her with a grief-dot-stricken face. He was the kind of person to hold grudges for the slightest grievances. It is not me. Why would I care about your hairiness? She retorted with an air of disdain. 
Then why has the coaching ability proposed this mission just now and not this morning when I went shopping? Because it would have been useless. The mission appeared because it makes you uncomfortable. If it gave your future missions all at once, what would be the point? You wouldn't even understand why you must do them. All right. I get it, but I'll do this tomorrow. I'm drenched with sweat, right now. As you wish, master. Now, proceed with your training. Dot. There was indeed a hairdressing salon in this fitness center. He just had to schedule this before working out the day after. Afterward, he passed his worst afternoon since the time his cousins mocked him at a Christmas family dinner where all the wildearths were gathered. Imitating the shadow guide, he pumped iron, stretched, did some high-dot-intensity interval training, stretched again and so on. Paradoxically, it was not so hard that he couldn't carry on with the exercises. It was precisely the issue. The path knew his stuff. The weights were rather light, the resting times long enough. However, there were many things he was discovering for the first time. Battle rope, jump rope, throwing weights, mobility and balance training, some weird yoga and breathing techniques. There were also many physiological movements to practice like punching, kicking, rolling or climbing. All in all, it was a well-thought training, with no details overlooked. At some point, Jake ceased to ponder over the logic behind all these strange exercises. He was getting jeering glances from other gym adherents non-stop, yet he didn't care. He was too focused on his task. Funnily, he was not the only person practicing exercises that didn't seem to make sense. Every human was treading their own path and as a result, abnormal behaviors were sort of becoming the new norm. When he arrived home, his nerd body was dead tired. His energy has been spent and despite the absence of muscle stiffness and soreness, he felt like his body had been run over by a bulldozer. Jake took a well-deserved shower before moving on to the next step. The next trial was not easier in the slightest. In fact, it could be even harsher. A little reminder, Jake's cooking skill had one point when the average human being had four. Cooking pasta or rice was okay, but anything else went far beyond his field of expertise. He would have to focus and follow the shadow guide moves very carefully. He didn't have knowledge of what recipe he was following. His cooking talent was almost inexistent for two simple reasons. No interest and no dexterity. He was not good with his hands and his few girlfriends could confirm it. That when boredom could struck him even during the most intimate act, you could easily picture what kind of shitty face he was doing right now. Well, he was sobbing. Chopping onions and garlic. The shadow guide was performing some awesome knife skills, slicing the vegetables at high speed. As he tried his best to follow his prodigious doppelganger, the meal was taking form. It was a simple stew with big slices of chicken meat and a varied selection of vegetables. Not the appetizing dish he was dreaming about. However, there was no doubt that it would turn out as a balanced healthy meal. The fragrance fuming from the cooking pot was stimulating and tempting his senses. This stew was full of promise. The unexpected revelation was that cooking encompassed many subskills. You needed an acute sense of observation, the ability to discern different scents and cooking sounds. Good control, knife mastery, knowledge of each kitchen instrument, recipe knowledge were all part of the same main skill recognized by the system. Jake had no idea how the oracle calculated the final score, and it didn't really matter. What he knew though, was that his shadow guide was not content with simply showing off. It wanted Jake to throw himself emotionally into the act of cooking. When the guide was seemingly immobile but was, in fact, taking a whiff above the stew, Jake could feel it. It was not foolish imitation. The real feat was to achieve the same way of thinking the shadow had while cooking. It was an extremely focused state. If he didn't know better, he would have thought the latter had gone all in on poker with only a pitiful pair of two. After an hour or so, simmering at medium temperature, and despite many mistakes, Jake cooked the best dish of his life. 
Even Crunch was licking his lips and drooling over the cooking pot. One cat and one human stared at each other like two mortal enemies, yet it was not long for Crunch to remember whose hand was feeding him. Jake was not a selfish person, at least not with a cat, so he took out two plates and served generous portions for both of them. Truth was that he wasn't free to gorge on food as he wished. The path was still active. The amounts of food were controlled, there was nothing left to chance. The meal proved to be delicious. However, the pleasure he was expecting didn't come. Indeed, he couldn't even eat in peace. In order to improve his intelligence, the oracle had concocted for him many mind games he couldn't skip. They were simple routines like brushing one's teeth, writing and eating with one's opposite hand, reading upside down, focusing on the present moment or learning survival.related knowledge. However, when he practiced them all, it took a toll on his brain. When he went to sleep, Jake wished to die and never wake up. He had barely survived his first day. Nonetheless, he knew that the following months would only be worse, never better. So next morning, Jake woke up on time and his life became hell again. Chapter 19 Video.Games and Reality You are listening at Novel Full.Audio The next morning the nerd shaved. Nothing to be proud of, but it proved that he was taking the Oracle mission seriously. He was not used yet to his new lifestyle. Cooking was time.consuming and his heart bled each time a fresh fruit or vegetable was consumed. If not for the promise of the soon-to-come investment returns, he wouldn't have been able to persevere. Jake didn't get his haircut, though. There was no urgency, and it shouldn't affect in any way his future chances of surviving. It was easier for him to endure a Spartan training rather than to socialize with new people. Shaving was already a good compromise on his part. The following weeks, Jake lived like a zombie, his schedule deprived of any breaks. He would first cook a balanced breakfast, then jog to the fitness center before continuing with his workout. Back at home, he would then have a shower, cook again for finally cramming all the evening whatever survival.related knowledge the oracle wanted him to learn. The good news was that it showed quick results. The oracle was not the perfect coach for nothing. Every action he was needed to perform had a logical explanation behind it. After a week only, his intelligence rose by one point. Cramming, focusing and silly mind.games all day had, despite all expectations, really made him smarter. His cooking skills quickly improved at first, as each meal meant a new recipe to discover. However, after a while, it began to slow down and then stagnate. Dot his physical condition had the same problem. His endurance, strength, and flexibility improved significantly in the first few days. To his great surprise, not once did he suffer from muscle aches and pains. Alas, such a curve of progress could not last indefinitely. The initial lightning progress was exhilarating for Jake. Unfortunately, reality had that touch of bitterness that a game would never have. In real life benefits, progress, and knowledge were not eternal. It was as if we were constantly walking up an escalator in the wrong direction, the slightest pause threw us backwards, making all our efforts meaningless. After three weeks of intensive training and dedication, Jake's new status was now as follows. Specie. Homo sapiens, primitive humanoid species, age 0.25, height. 180 centimeters, weight. 87 kilograms, health. Healthy, strength. 11.5, plus 1.5, points, normal male. 10 points, dot. Agility. 9.5, 1.5 points, normal male. 10 points, dot. Constitution. 11.5, plus 2.5, points, normal male. 9 points, dot. Vitality. 11.5, plus 2.5, points, normal male. 10 points, dot. Intelligence. 14.5, plus 1.5, points, normal male. 10 points, dot. Perception. 10.5, 
plus 0.5 points, normal male. 10 points, dot. Such increases might seem superbly pleasing, but they were in fact only the result of an immediate adaptive response by the body. The gain in strength. A simple adaptation of the nervous system. His muscle mass, its quality had not fundamentally changed. His constitution and vitality. Of course, so many cardio-vascular exercises, the transition to a nutritive but balanced diet, as well as adequate sleep hygiene were destined to succeed. The number and size of mitochondria increased rapidly, as did tolerance to lactic acid. The number of red blood cells and blood volume could also be adjusted in record time. This was the main reason why, even today, endurance athletes still physically prepare themselves at high altitudes when a competition was to take place. Some doping products such as EPO had similar effects. However, these rapid adaptations were just as short.lived. Returning to sea level, combined with an abrupt cessation of sport, could ruin your physical achievements in just a few weeks. As for his agility, he owed it to greater flexibility, dexterity, coordination, and balance. Even his perception had improved. Less computer use and greater awareness of one's environment had undoubtedly played a role. Concerning his skills, he had gained new ones and significantly evolved in others. Paradoxically, despite his apparent devotion to the path, his procrastination skills had not diminished one iota. However, it was now being suppressed by two skills he already had before. Rational thinking and common sense. These skills were not exceptional in their own right. Anyone with a functional brain, not parasitized by absurd beliefs, should have a correct level. Sadly, it only took a few psychological shortcomings to put these to one side. Indeed, Jake's common sense was as bad as one could imagine. To procrastinate and indulge to such an extent, you had to have an undeniable talent for ignoring what should never be. Escaping from predators by burying his head in the sand was a good summary of how he lived before meeting the oracle. Had he changed already? No, not really. Such profound personality changes took a considerable amount of time and awareness. Nevertheless, the oracle deserved some credit. A full dot time program like his had the same effect on him as good behavioral therapy. Of the many skills he had acquired, the majority were actually related to the various functional movements he had practiced during his training. Jumping, footwork, boxing, dodging, all kinds of acrobatics, and finally all kinds of survival skills. They included lighting a campfire, recognizing medicinal herbs and using them properly, getting water or food, making basic traps, and making clothing or leather from fur and skin. In addition to this, he also learned first aid, sewing, and even how to identify all kinds of materials. Even with an IQ now close to 145, this was not a task that could be accomplished in such a short period of time. After three weeks, the skills he had been practicing looked something like this. Knowledge and skill masteries. Rational thinking and common sense. 100 points, normal human. 10. Most people think they are always right or full of common sense, but how many of them actually act sensibly? You've always been a logical person. No absurd beliefs or superstitions cloud your judgment, and you are open-minded. By overcoming your procrastinating instincts, you have brought the common sense you have neglected to the forefront. Note, however, that it was fear that led you to go against your true nature. Without it, or in the face of stronger stimulation, you could fall back into your old ways. Informatics 76 points, normal human 8 points You're not at the novice level anymore. Cyber engineering 51 points, normal human 1 point You are not a novice anymore. Communication 5 points, plus 1 chap 16, normal human 10 points. Being solitary for too long given birth to social anxiousness. You can barely talk with your workmates and clients. Your body language and word choices rarely convey your true intention. 
you also don't have the confidence nor the oral skills needed to perform a public speech or holding a conference. Acrobatics 68 points, normal human 10 points You could only do a backflip, but you added some new strings to your bow. With good coordination and balance, you can now quickly adapt your movements to most situations. Gymnastics competitions are a long way off, but at least you don't look like a potato when you roll. Fighting 16, plus 9, points, normal people. 5 points. You have a ferocious side inside you. You don't play by the rules. Should a hypothetical fight break out, the groin, throat, and eyes would be your instinctive targets. You're not courageous, but don't have any fleeing instinct. All those gestures you've been practicing recently have given you a good foundation. You still don't know anything about martial arts, but no one can say you can't throw a punch. Cooking 21, plus 20, points, normal human. 4 points. Cooking morning, noon and evening real gourmet meals worthy of the name have allowed your talent as a cook to shine through. Your understanding is still rudimentary, but at least you've stopped using your microwave. A small step for man, but a big step for you. Survival. 34, normal human. 0.2 points. It would be arrogant of you to think that you can survive a naked winter in Siberia, but at least you won't risk foolishly poisoning yourself by eating the wrong berry. If the environment is not too hostile and you have a solution, you will be able to grasp it. He had many other skills, but they were not significant enough to be mentioned or were included in the calculation of the level of mastery of the above skills. Everything was going well. So why Jake had to face reality so hard? A simple truth. Contrary to video.games, in real life, you could lose your stats and skill levels. That is what happened to Jake. One morning, he just decided to have a well.deserved day. Off. On that day, he didn't train, didn't cook, didn't learn nor review anything as he should have. The day after, he discovered the appalling truth. His attributes and skills had regressed. Not much, but he had lost 0.1 point of intelligence and 1 or 2 points in most of his knowledge.dependent skills. His procrastinating instincts then returned to full power. The common sense that had enabled him to stay on course collapsed, giving way to a deep despondency. After three weeks of relentless training, he had long since forgotten that mysterious mouse. The fear that was supposed to drive him into action, forgotten. He returned to his original lazy, indolent self. What Jake didn't know, however, was that the rest of the world, which he had ignored throughout his ordeal, was no better off than he was.